This is how to blend a photo on a wall to make it look like it was graffiti art in Photoshop. All right, so once you have your wall open, and just so you know, this brick wall image that I'm using, I have this linked in the description below along with all the other assets that I'm gonna use in this tutorial. But once you open your wall, I would suggest maybe resizing it to get the bricks looking how you want. Because in my case, all these bricks are just too small. So I'm gonna start by going over to my background layer here, right clicking, converting it to a smart object, then going command or control T. And really, I'm just gonna go to the top corner, stretch this one out, and I'm gonna maybe stretch this side out, but I'm gonna make sure I line up the sidewalk again. I want this sidewalk at the bottom of mine. I think it just adds a little bit of you know, character to the project in the end when we can see the sidewalk and the brick wall. Okay, once you have it sized the way you want, click check, and then we're gonna create a displacement map. So there's really only three steps to do that. We're gonna go, the first one is to go up to image, down to adjustments, and make it black and white. So just click black and white. Whatever comes up here, it doesn't really matter. Just click OK. Then we're going to head up to Filter, down to Blur, and over to Gaussian Blur. Just make sure your radius is around 2, and then click OK. And then just go Command or Control L to bring up Levels, and we're going to increase the contrast here. So just take this slider, slide it to the left to brighten your brights. Take this slider, slide it to the right to darken your darks, and that should be fine. And then click OK. Now all we have to do is save it. So just go up to File, Save As, and you're gonna make sure you put it in a folder that you know where it is. So I have mine in my Assets Wall Blend folder, and I'm just gonna highlight here and rename it as Wall Displace. Click Save, click OK, and then just kind of forget about that for now. We're gonna come back to that quite a bit later in the tutorial. So to start our actual project, now all we're gonna do is duplicate this layer, our only layer, so Command or Control J to make a copy. On this bottom one, we're just gonna right click on our smart filters and we're gonna go clear smart filters. So that's gonna bring this one back to our main background. So I'm gonna just call this background. And then this one, we're just gonna eliminate Gaussian blur. We don't need it on the actual project, so I'm gonna right click and delete that smart filter. So now we're just left with levels and black and white. And I'm actually gonna double click on levels to bring this back up. And I'm not gonna have it just that contrasty. I'm gonna slide these out a little bit wider, not all the way to the, to the ends here, just a little bit out for now, because we can still come back to this later again, and then just click OK. So right now you're left with this black and white image of the wall, which is what we want, because we're gonna put our own color and texture over top of it anyway, but we still want the sidewalk. That's where we left this background. We still want the sidewalk to be in color. So now on our smart filter, so this, this white box here, click on this mask, go over to your brush, make sure it's black in the foreground right here, and pick an appropriate size of brush. I'd say hardness around 80 is probably fine, if you have a sidewalk, obviously. Maybe I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And then I'm gonna just line the top of this circle to the sidewalk right here where it connects with the wall. I'm gonna hold shift and then I'm just gonna paint across here. So you can see that that holding shift makes it so it goes straight across and that just kind of paints the color of the sidewalk back in from this background image right there. Because basically what happened, this little black strip now on this mask means that it kind of punched a hole through it so we could see this one underneath. Next, we're gonna bring in two kind of paint textures to put over top of this brick wall to add kind of paint texture, obviously, and to add some color. So we're gonna go up to File, down to Place Embedded, and so I have mine here. Again, these are linked in the description below. I'm gonna start with this crazy one here, so I'm gonna double click. That's gonna place that one in. I'm just gonna slide it so it lines up, maybe use my arrow keys to make sure it lines up right at the bottom where the wall and the sidewalk connect. And then I'm just gonna stretch it out a little bit up here, stretch it out and click check. Then I'm gonna go over to my blend modes. I'm gonna change it from normal and down to soft light. So you can see already we've now created kind of this painted wall instead of the black and white wall. I'm gonna go back over, file, place embedded and pick the other texture, so this more painty one here. Do the same thing, I'm gonna import it, nudge it up a bit so it lines up with the sidewalk, stretch it out. 
to where I want it. So maybe to there and there, that's fine. Click check and then same thing. Change my blend mode from normal down to soft light. So now you can see that that just made it a little bit more chaotic. So that's just one of them. This is just the other one. You mix them together, creates a more interesting effect. But you can also adjust the opacity to change how much of each you see as well. So maybe you wanted this one to be less intense. So maybe you take your opacity and drop it down to 50% instead. So now there's more of a mix with this one instead of this one, but you can maneuver either of these to whatever percentage you want to create the look that you want. Another thing that we can do before we move on to bringing in our actual image is you can go down to the little adjustment layers right here, this half circle thing, click on that. And I would add a hue saturation on top. And all that means is this is gonna affect everything underneath. But now if I just kind of slide this down a little bit here, we can see these sliders and you can saturate this more. So bring more color in if you want or take some color away. So you can play with how much color you have there, how much saturation. Plus you can even tweak with this hue, you can tweak what the colors actually look like. So you can go crazy to these colors on the side. I tend to stay what it was, you know, I think it looks the best like that, but me will just go off to the minuses a little bit over there, but play around with hue saturation, get it looking how you want. And once you have it looking kind of how you want, I would suggest then going back to levels here. So double click on levels from your original black and white smart filter there and just move it off to the side so you can see the wall. And then I'd play around with these again to also mess with how the wall looks. So if I take this slider, it's gonna darken the darks. This is gonna brighten my brights, but this is probably the most important one to move right now is kind of your mid-tones. So I'm just gonna darken my wall up just a little bit like that and then click OK. Okay, so now that we have our wall all designed and ready to go, we're gonna slide right here and go back up to hue saturation, which is our top layer. And we're gonna bring in our actual image layer this time. So again, go to file, place embedded. I'm gonna use this, you know, kind of picture here of this girl being Pennywise. I'm just gonna stretch it out to be a little bit bigger. I'm trying to line up mine so that like the, the curve of the balloon is hitting just below on the sidewalk because I don't want this kind of like dead line to be on the actual wall. So I'm gonna make sure that that part, the part that's cut off is on the sidewalk. Just stretch it out to the size that you want. I kind of want just the face to be pretty big on the wall. When you're good, click check. And now we just have to make our selection to cut out the face from the background. So to do that, we're gonna go to the fourth tool down, one, two, three, four. This is the quick selection tool. If you don't see it, right click, you might see magic wand or something. Go to quick selection tool and then click this button right here, select subject. Photoshop's gonna do a good job of selecting your subject, hopefully. Uh, in this case, it did a pretty good job for mine. If there is anything that, like let's say it's kind of indented like this that you want as part of the selection, just go up to the plus here and paint it back in. If there's something that's jutting out that you don't want as part of the selection, go to the minus and paint it out. Okay, so mine looks pretty good. I'm still gonna go to select and mask here just to kind of do like a double check. So I have mine like view here. I have mine on layers so I can see right through to what it would look like. So I think that looks pretty good with the hair. You could mess around with things. I'll link another video in the description below to play around with this if you have some issues with your selection. Um, and then once you're good here, I'm just gonna say output to keep it as selection click OK, and then just head down here to this little box with the circle in it, click on that, that's gonna put a mask on it, like we had on the other one down here with this little black strip punching a hole through. Now this just means that everything black on here is gone, we've punched a hole through that, and everything in white is what we have left, which is our subject. And in my case, I just have this issue, I'm gonna go to my move tool for a second and just nudge this down a bit. I still have the issue of the balloon being over top of the sidewalk here. So for me, I'm gonna to go to the third tool down here. I'm gonna right click this polygonal lasso tool and I'm gonna, while well, I'm selected on the mask right here, on the mask side, not the thumbnail over here, I'm gonna click at the bottom of the sidewalk here, go across, make a line there and just make a box around that area. And then while I'm on the mask, I'm gonna go back to the brush, make sure it's a black brush still and I'm just gonna paint that out. So now that section is gone and then Command and Control D to deselect. The only other thing you might notice, because I nudged it down, I now have this little gap at the top here. 
So I'm gonna switch to white and just quickly kind of paint that little section back in so I have the top of her head back. All right, so now all we have to do is apply some filters and adjust a couple blend modes and we're done. So instead of being selected on the mask now, make sure to click back on the thumbnail side here and we're gonna go up to filter, down to filter gallery and when this pops up, you can pick between, I'm gonna just go here to fit and view. You can pick between dry brush. So if you like this look better in terms of what it's doing here and play around with things in here, or I like poster edges. I think that's more of a painty look. If you look at my sliders here, I have this at zero, edge intensity at zero, and my posterization is just at one. Then I'm gonna click OK. That's gonna apply it to my image here. And you can see it adds it to the smart filter. So we can always go back and change this and mess with it later if you want. Then we're gonna go back up to filter, this time down to stylize and over to oil paint. For me, again, I'm gonna, I don't like the squigglies that this makes, but we're gonna do something afterwards to kind of fix that. So for right now, I have stylization up pretty high. I might bring this back just a bit. So somewhere around eight, um, just make it look as painty like drawn as possible and then click OK. And then we're just going to go back up to filter down to blur and go down to surface blur this time and pick something like this. Like my radius is at 34 threshold 24. So like 25, 35 for these two settings, you can see it kind of smooths out some of those squigglies and then just click OK. At this point, we only have two things left to do one is to add one more filter, but that's gonna go back and put our displacement map that we made at the very start. So we're gonna go up to filter, we're gonna go down to distort and over to displace, keep it at 10, you know, that should be fine, horizontal scale and vertical scale, those should be fine, just make sure these same things are checked. Click okay, and then it's gonna ask you to find that file that we saved. So wall displace is right here. I'm gonna double click and you're gonna see what it does. It kind of shifts this around to kind of match what we said in terms of the contrast on the bricks from the very beginning, the black and white one. And now all we have to do is adjust a couple blend modes and duplicate our layer. So instead of normal here, I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna change this one to hard light. And you can see that does a pretty good job already, but we're also gonna right click over here to the right of our image layer, go up to blending options, and we're gonna mess with in blending options here at the very bottom, our underlying layer. If you slide this along, this brings out like the shadows underneath. So that, you don't wanna slide the whole thing though. We wanna hold Alt or Option, click on one side and separate them. So you can slowly kind of move and bring as much as you want through. So I'm kind of looking in this area. I just want a little bit of the kind of shadows from those bricks kind of popping through. And on the other side, it's gonna be the highlights. So it's kind of these lines. So in this one, I'm not gonna go very far. If you see, I don't need the lines to be so harsh because it was painted over. So the white probably wouldn't be white. You know, it'd have some color over it. So I'm gonna maybe just go a tiny little bit, just have a little bit of, you know, more of these brick lines kind of showing through. Maybe on this side, maybe a little bit more. When you have it looking the way that you want, click OK. Which brings us to the final thing we're gonna do, which is to scuff up our image a little bit so it looks a little more natural on this brick wall. But before we do that, I just wanna make sure you know you can still mess with anything you want over here that we've done already. For example, you can take away a paint texture just to see one of them alone. You can obviously adjust the opacity. So maybe you want this one at 100% now and this one at 50% so you can see how that one looks. You can obviously add more filters or manipulate the ones that we have already here by just double clicking on them. You can adjust hue saturation or even just your levels here by just double clicking on levels. Maybe you want a more contrasty wall, so you're gonna bring these closer together like that, or you wanna make it a little bit more subdued by stretching them out a little bit. I think I'm gonna keep mine maybe like that and then just click okay. And then once you have everything looking the way that you want, now we can scuff everything up a little bit. So to do that, we're just gonna click on our top image layer and we're gonna put everything that's art in a group. So let's make the group first by clicking on this little folder down here. Click on that or go Control or Command G and that'll make this little group folder. Double click on it, we're gonna name it Art. Click on our top image, hold Shift, click on our black and white image, 
then click and drag all those things into that art folder. So when we close it down, all we have outside of the folder is our original background brick image, and then everything else is in this folder. Now we're just gonna put a mask on it. So go down here to this little box with the circle in it, click on that, it's gonna put a mask. Now, whatever we paint, so use a brush that is black in the foreground here, I'm gonna just bump this opacity up to 100 just so you can see for a second. Whatever we paint on this mask in black is gonna punch a hole through so we can see right through to this original brick background. Now, only at 100% is it gonna paint all the way through. Like it's gonna punch the hole all the way through. I'm gonna undo that for a second. If you choose 50%, for example, it's gonna be a little bit more subtle, obviously. So my suggestion is just to mess with these four parameters when you're trying to scuff up your background. So adjust your opacity. Don't keep it the same at all times. Have some that are a little bit higher, some that are lower. Change the type of brush that you use. Don't use the same brush the whole time. Change the size of that brush. And the fourth thing, change the brush settings. So if you don't see brush settings over here, go to window and then down to brush settings right there. And you can change things like scattering the texture, you know, whatever shape dynamics. So if you go in there, maybe we have the size bigger, diameter, angle jitter. So it'll change the look of the brush so that it's not super consistent. If you use the same brush, the same size, same opacity the whole time, it's gonna not look as good. So for me, I'm just gonna show you here at 46%, I'm gonna maybe paint some of this out by the hair here. So it looks like that part of the wall has just kind of been scuffed up a little bit. Maybe, you know, a random spot over here, you know, whatever, maybe I'll change the size and pick maybe rough charcoal instead. I know that's not much different. And I'm gonna, you know, mess with the bottom down here quite a bit because if this was real, then the bottom of this painted image on the wall would be a little more scuffed up with people like, their shoes hitting it or, you know, garbage or, you know, whatever, the street sweepers. The bottom of this image would be a little bit more, you know, non-painty than anything else. If you do take away too much, like let's say you take away this area and you're like, ah, that's too much, I want to bring some of that back, then just flick this to white and you can start painting, you know, stuff back in as well. And that's it. But if you're looking for other quick and easy Photoshop tutorials, make sure to subscribe to this guy.